All right, welcome back to another uh, political centric video. Uh, my name is Lollipop. Remember to like if you like and subscribe for more videos. Today we are talking about what flavor of freedom are you talking about the different types of the political ideology libertarianism. So libertarianism is focused more on individualistic, basically more freedom, uh, freedom to pursue your own goals. But it also can be economic. It can also be, you know, political as it, it is a political ideology, but it could also be more economic centric, like more corporations can do whatever they want. It'll be more social. Social leaning libertarianism is more focused on people. People can do whatever they want. There's also real religious or theocratic libertarianism, which means that people can only do what religion dictates, but they can do whatever they want as long as they follow a specific religious doctrine. We're going to look at all the types of libertarianism in a bit, but let's just focus on what the definition is. So freedom versus control. Libertarian is a political... So uh, psychology that advocates for only minimal state intervention in the free market and the private lives of citizens. So as you can see there, there's both the economic and the social version. The economic libertarian focuses on free market aspects, that the market should be competitive but also free of government control. And the social version of libertarian focuses on private lives of citizens, should be, uh, should be free of control from the government. So it's also an ideology that pushes for little to no disruption in the overall free flow of the economy and or the rights of the freedoms of the individual. So again, you can see the economic versus the social libertarianism. Uh, economic libertarianism, you can see free flow of the economy should be not. So no disruptions in the economy by the government. And then the social libertarianism, you can see rights and freedoms of the individual right here. So economic is free flow. Economic liberalism ar argues for free flow of the economy. And social libertarianism pushes for little to no disruption in the rights and freedoms of an individual. So statism. Statism is the opposite political ideology of libertarianism, an ideology that promotes state authority over the economy and personal freedoms. So the opposite. An, an economic statist wants uh, absolute authority over the economy. So the state controls the economy with no... So the economy is completely destroyed, not destroyed, completely authoritized by the state or government that is imposing upon it. And a social statist would suggest that all personal freedoms should be only should be dictated by the state and the state only. So no individual sentiment whatsoever. A statist, of course, is a theory that defends a government's job to oversee and maintain the economy as an economic statist, while protecting the general citizenry by limiting every citizen's individual rights and privileges. So a statist's argument for the economy was that the economy is being abused and therefore the state has to make sure that it is not abused. And a social statist would say if a, if a person has, has the right to own a gun, they have a right to kill and therefore they should not have a right to own a gun because that would be taking away their right to kill. That would be a statist argument, a social statist argument for taking away an individual's right and a st economic statist's argument for maintaining the economy only by the state. Of course, also statism promotes a state of oversight over the economy to neglect human greed while invoking more control over the rights of each individual. So basically, they are saying that the that humans are naturally greedy so that the economy must be overseen by the state and not hu individuals, and that since individuals are most likely going to be violent, that the state should invoke more control over the rights of each individual. So again, very centric on the idea that humans are naturally evil and greedy, and therefore the state must oversee them to prevent them from carrying out greedy and hu evil actions. So two very different ideologies. So being both for freedom and control, believing in a well-regulated economy but having more rights and freedoms of privacy, so again, you're being an economic libertarianism, but you're also being a social statist. So you're believing that there should be a well-regulated economy, but having more freedoms and privacy. Well, that means you're being an economic statist and a social statist. So I mean, you either, so you're basically either or. So the first statement here, believing in a well-regulated economy, economic statists, believing the state should regulate the economy, but having more rights and freedoms and privacy for individuals, a social libertarian. Uh, the opposite, of course, is being an economic libertarian while being a social statist. 
So basically having a positive view of a totally free market economy while policing the general public. Again, economically libertarian, but socially statist. Having a re regulated economy to promote competition to give individuals more choices and choose from each from and enacting basic laws to protect individuals from each other. So you're basically in the middle here. You're not a full economic libertarian, but you still believe that the, that the economy should ha be, have a competitive market. So you are regulating it a bit, but not much. Same here, you're also saying that l individuals should have some rights, but they should also have basic laws to protect them from, you know, killing each other. So you're not, you're not both a full economic libertarian, but you're also not a full economic statist. You're not a full social libertarian, but you're also not a, a full social statist. You're pretty much half and half of each ideology. And then a totally free market economy while controlling every aspect of an individual's life to force them to participate in this economy. Basically, you are a full economic libertarian and a full social statist. So basic, you're basically saying this this is basically what anarcho-capitalism would be is that everyone should be mandatory to participate in the economy or risk losing their life so basically you're a complete anarcho-libertarian but you're also a complete anarcho-statist you believe that it should be mandatory for the economy to be totally free but everyone should have to participate in it so you are controlling uh, a citizen's rights for you're basically saying it's mandatory for them to participate. So you are a full anarcho-statist, believing everyone should participate or else, while also being a full anarcho-libertarian from economic libertarian, saying that the economy should be totally free. So if you want to look at what these views are, the first one, of course, is social libertarianism. You're very, you want everyone to have rights, freedoms, and privacy, but you believe in a well-regulated economy, that is a social libertarianism. The current modern era of society is this one, having a positive view of a total free market while policing the general public. Think about most economics. We have a global economic system that has little to no regulations on it, but well, but the general public is still policed, so their people do have their rights limited, but they still have rights, so it is a half half status, half social status, so you do have some policing, but also some rights. So that is kind of the current current modern era of society. Then we have the preferred vision of society, which we talked about, having a, having a somewhat regulated economy and having basic laws to enact somewhat protection. So half of half, half libertarian, half statist, a preferred vision for society. And then we have the elitist, which we talked about, what an elitist view of what society should be only the elites have total complete control over the economy and everyone else is forced to participate or suffer the consequences so we have social libertarianism current modern era social society we have half and half preferred vision and the elitist anarcho view of what society should be so now let's get into what are the flavors of libertarianism so what libertarian are you this is pretty much the part of the video where we're going to be discussing all the different types of libertarianism and seeing which one you think you are and obviously if you're a statist then i would say that you're probably not gonna you would i would just say keep watching the video and see if whether some of these agree with you maybe you're not a statist maybe you actually do believe in some of these ideologies there are a lot of flavors of libertarian to choose from so let's look at some basics and spread out so first of all you have classic libertarianism this was the first um, ideology that was developed in the late 1700s during monarcho um, company it's basically like the monarchy system was kind of merging into capitalism but not much and then of course it split out into social libertarianism which we've talked about they focused more on social rights than economic rights theocratic libertarianism which focused on it was basically social libertarianism but with a religious aspect basically what we talked about earlier with how individuals can do whatever they want as long as they follow the rights of a religious text or a religious doctrine if they follow those rules then they can live their lives however they want and then we have bleeding heart libertarianism which is basically anarcho libertarianism we'll talk about that in a second and then we'd spread out so once the industrial revolution happened we had more economic libertarianism come up 
Neolibertarianism focused more on the economy. Civil libertarianism focused more on society. was basically social libertarianism, but with an economic aspect. Paternal libertarianism was a policy that was more focused on the person aspect, but argued for some control. And agorism was a was the first version of anarcho-libertism that libertarianism we would see. And then we have some modern ones that showed up. So geo-libertarianism is basically what happen is what happens when you combine classical and civil libertarianism, which is why I placed it like this. Um, we have green libertarianism, which focuses more on the environment. And if you have a good environment, then that would in turn help the people overall live freer lives. We have biological libertarianism that focuses more on people not even having a society, it says that society and government have caused the destruction of humanity, and evolutionary libertarianism is, is the last and the and the smallest is the smallest minority of libertarians which believe that humanity needs to evolve and is being stopped by both the economy and society. So basically it is neither economic or social libertarianism. So let's start with classical libertarianism. The first libertarian ideology advocates for free market, laissez-faire economics, civil liberties under the rule of law with an emphasis on individual autonomy, limited government, economic freedom, political freedom, and the freedom of speech. So basically everything. It has both social and economic libertarianism combined into everything here. Basically, if you are participating in the economy, you should be able to do whatever you want, open a new business, open up new businesses, sell whatever you want, and if you're an individual, then you shouldn't be limited by the government whatsoever. So basically, it this was before social and economic liberty, libertarianism split. This was when it was first developed, and of course, it was developed in the UK because that's where most lib, where libertarian first came out. Even though the French did also influence it as well. So key concepts: minimal state control over the economy, economy and the individual, so both social and economic libertarians both would say that this is a good philosophy to have. Second, a belief the state must exist regardless, so I'm sorry for all those anarchists, this is not for you, it still believes the government should exist, but it should be the most limited government possible. Third, control must exist, but in its smallest regard, so the economy should still have some regulation, but the smallest amount of regulation possible. A company should not be made uh, a legal company should not be able to sell literally human skulls. Like, it sh there should not be a business that cla that allows people to kill other people as a business. So no bounty hunting, no pirating, no piracy. So basically, it's just like the economy is limited, but just in the smallest regard possible. And the fourth principle focuses on a free market economy and individual freedoms, so both economic and social libertarianism. So if you're a classical libertarianism, you're basically both. You want everything to be free, and you don't really care about about any control, but you still believe that a state should exist, but in its smallest form possible. So social libertarianism was came out when there was a split between economic and social in society, an anti-authoritarian, anti-capitalist, political, and current emphasis on self-governance and worker self-management, and contrasted from other forms of socialism by its rejection of state ownership and from other forms of libertarian by its rejection of private property. So basically, think of if Marxism and libertarianism were the same thing. So basically, they said that Marx was correct in some ways, but not all. So it said that state ownership should not exist, the state should not have any control over the individual, and the, econ the economy should not have any uh, control over the individual. Basically, the economy should be controlled, but this person should not. So like we talked about earlier, they're statist, meaning more control when it comes to the economy, but liberta full libertarian when it comes to the individual, that's where social libertarian gets its notion. Of course, key concepts, a combination of both anarchist thought and Marxism, anarchist in the sense that an individual should be able to do whatever they want, but Marxist in the fact that the economy should be controlled and there should be no capitalist sentiment and there should be no private property whatsoever. It's in the second thing, belief that prop private property is used against the majority of the society by the minority, so there should be no private property. Anti-capitalist views, that's where the socialists and Marxism comes in. And the fourth one, 
everyone has an inalienable right to be themselves and be free from discrimination, oppression by others. So, of course, you got to be pretty much an anarcho-socialist to be a social libertarian. All right, theocratic libertarianism. This came around the time when God was coming back into people's lives. Calvinists can also be considered as theocratical libertarians. But the definition believes that mature individuals are permitted maximum freedom under God's law. This basically means that only under God can an individual gain the maximum right to autonomy. So basically, you can do whatever you want as long as you are following God's rules. A completely freed individual still must worship God and, have, and follow his laws. Unlike classical libertarians, they do not believe in a state must exist, believing that only God's law is required. Any dissenter should be controlled or forced to accept God's law. So basically, God's law is law. There does not need to be a state. So they are kind of anarchists in the belief that there shouldn't be a state. They do, ha do not mention the economy at all, so I assume that they don't really care about the economy either. This is more of a social libertarian that only focuses on God's law as the only law and the only state of control. So basically, if social libertarianism was focused only on the religious doctrines and religious notions, there was no economy, no state, it's all anarchy as long as you follow God's law. And that's basically libertarian. So think of yourself as an anarchist that is also socially based, so you believe that everyone should have maximum freedom, but there is one person, there is only one person that can control people, and that is God's law. And only God has the right to enforce it. So the final, the final first generation split of libertarians, we have the bleeding heart libertarianism. Uh, focuses on the compatibility support for civil liberties, free markets on one hand, and a concern for social justice and the well-being of the worst off on the other. Key beliefs that the poor should be better off if the world was more individually controlled, advocate on the belief benefits of minimal state intervention and liberty for self-interested individuals. Most concerned for helping the poor climb the social ladder better off, therefore raising the collective class of society. So think about it as society is a is a chain is a fence is a wall of stone pillars. If one pillar is smaller than the others, it is noticeable. So if the stone pill if all stone pillars are raised higher, even the poorest one, then the wall gets taller. Basically, bleeding heart libertarians believe that social justice must be enforced so that everyone in society if everyone goes up if their qual if everyone's quality of life goes up then every then the entire global uh, average goes up so they want there to be no more poor people so basically there would have to be an society would have to continue to increase so if everyone gets a low if there's people that don't get any bread, then they make it so they say we make more bread. So everyone gets bread. If someone, if there's a minority of people that get more than one piece of bread, then they argue that everyone should have more piece, more than one piece of bread. And it keeps increasing there, from there. So basically, Bleeding Heart Libertarian is based on the sole belief that there should be no poor people because instead of, you know, not do, now, you may think, oh, they mean no, no more poor people, so they're okay with killing poor people. No, that the complete opposite. They believe that the poor should be given more resources so that they can get to the average, so the average of the society goes up, and then the bar is raised. So the poverty bar continues to rise because the average of society's well-being continues to rise. So being poor is not is now not having enough food, but now not having as much food as everyone else. So your basics are met. Now we're just trying to make it so that the overall collective of class of society thinks of poor as not having 50 pieces of bread instead of zero pieces of bread. All right. So now we look at civil libertarianism. We're now in the second generation of libertarian split. Supports civil liberties, rights, and o which emphasizes the supremacy of individual rights and freedoms over any kind of authority, state, corporate, or peers. Key concepts, consensus of a libertarian party, presidential candidate, chase Oliver and legalize weed and drugs, for social freedoms over economic freedoms, social progress over free market economics. So basically, this is the libertarian party. 
If you've ever listened to the Libertarian Party, they're a bunch of wackos, but they basically just believe that everyone should have individual rights and that there should be no, that personal rights and freedom should be over any kind of state, corporate state authority, corporate authority, or peers authority. Now, this does kind of make it kind of weird because they have their kind of a, a political party, so they're trying to gain control, even though they believe that there should be no control. So it is a kind of weird self, it's a self-deprecating ideology, I will say, but at least they're, they've got some sort of thing. Liberal, civil libertarianism is kind of weird and wacky, because it kind of like says like, individual freedom should be protected, but then when you ask, oh, how are they going to be protected with no state, they get kind of quiet-lipped, because they kind of don't have an answer for that. So civil libertarianism is pretty good, but there is kind of a hypocrisy there where they don't really know how to protect people's rights from being taken away if there's no state authority to protect them. Kind of weird, and that's kind of why they're kind of looked at as the weird wacko party. I kind of have no answers for a lot of questions. So agorism, a belief that a society, all relations between people are voluntary exchanges, a free market. This is an anarcho belief of libertarianism. Social anarchy, free market economy. Both extremes of social and economic freedoms. No state authority has greater power than individuals. So basically, it's anarchism, but libertarian. So basically, agorism basically has evolved into left-wing economic policies, adopted some social and civil libertarian policies, still regards as the state or any authority as eminent number one. So basically, they want anarchy. There should be a free market, anarcho economic values and anarcho-socialism they basically believe that anarchy this is the anarchy anarcho-libertarian part belief so if you are an anarchist and you want to be a libertarian and you believe in some of these key concepts then maybe you are an anor in you believe in agorism so paternal libertarianism a theory that attempts to balance individual freedom of choice with influencing people to make decisions that are in their best interest so this is a weird one but basically it says that it goes along this example, an idea that people's preferences are influenced by practice such as framing effects, default rules and starting points, behavioral techniques to guide people towards better outcomes while restricting their freedom. So basically, let's say there is a man who is fasting because he does not want to eat. However, if he dies, that would be a great sadness for everyone else. Now, you can't tell him that he has to eat because that would be control, but let's say you say that he can fast for longer if he eats, saying that your fast will be broken when you die, so you may want to eat to keep your fast going. Maybe you're going for the world record of fasting and saying that maybe you eat some crackers and then you can fast for longer. So then you can try and convince him that, hey, if you die, you can't fast for longer because you'll be dead. So why don't you just eat a little bit to keep yourself from dying? And that would make it so that you could keep him alive without forcing him to eat and break his fast, but also allowing him to make his own decisions that are in the best interest of everyone. They were basically being the parent in the situation, which is what paternal libertarianism stands for. Making pe influence people to make the right decisions without controlling them to make those decisions. All right, so neo-libertarianism. This is the weird. This is one of the weird ones. It combines libertarians' most moral commitment to democratic of liberty with a procedure that se selects principles for restricting liberty based on unanimous agreement, in which everyone's particular interests will receive a fair hearing. So basically, it's a bunch of words that mean we're libertarians and we don't really know what type of libertarian we are. So key concepts is that imprisonment is restricting individuals' freedom and. So in which they, if ne is necessary, if they have justifiably earned that punishment. So basically, this is saying that everyone should have free rights, but if someone does kill someone else, they should be punished for it. So basically, there should be social punishments for doing bad actions, but there shouldn't be punishments that are too severe. Like, let's say someone steals from someone, they shouldn't die from stealing from someone. But if they kill someone else, then maybe the punishment should fit the crime. So of course... That's kind of what neolibertarianism means. There should be punishments, but not severe punishments. Everyone should have the right to do whatever they want as long as they're not hurting anybody else, and that is the belief and slogan of neolibertism. 
green libertarianism a free market provides environmentally beneficial outcomes basically if you support the environment and you're an environmental activist you and also support freedom of choice then you are a liberta green libertarian key concepts an individual may acquire natural services as long as it does not deprave or harm another while acknowledging that all natural services are abundant and the world is ecologically limited. See it similar to geolibertarianism, which land and natural resources are provided by the land hold real value. So basically, Green Libertarian says that everyone has the ability to do whatever they want as long as they are not hurting the environment. Same with the economy. So let's say a company is dumping sewage into a river. That company will be punished and they are not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to pollute. You'll have to find somewhere, something, some way else that does not hurt the environment. So basically, companies can do whatever they want, and the economy can do whatever they want, as long as the environment is not affected. Same with individuals. You can cut down some trees to make a home, but you can't just deforest an entire continent to build a bunch of homes. You have to replant those trees, or figure out a way to conserve the amount of wood available that you've already cut down. Again, you can do things that are environmentally beneficial for you and also the environment. And that's kind of what green libertarianism is. As long as you're not hurting the environment, you can do whatever you want. All right, so geolibertarianism favors a taxation system based on income derived from land and natural resources instead of labor. So basically, instead of being paid for labor, your value comes from the land you own. So basically, if you own a house, anything on your property, you own. So if you own a farm, you own anything that comes from that farm. If, you own, if you're in a city and you own an apartment, anything in that apartment is tied to you. So you get anything that is on your land. So key concepts are basically Gregorism and Libertarianism. Gregorism, economies based on the value of owned land and its resources. Minimalist government that seeks to protect land from being stolen and resources being used without permission of the owner. So basically, government is able to exist, but it only serves to protect the private property of people who own property. So basically, everyone gets to own property. If anything on your land is worth anything, that value goes to you. And the government should only exist to protect your land from being, from being uh, stolen from or resources being used without the permission of you, the landowner. So it's basically everyone has the right to own land and, peep, and the government should still exist, but only to protect private property and nothing else. So land-based libertarianism. Biological libertarianism is a weird one and defined solely on the concept that individuals the freedom from society. Every single person should be able to live freely. Basically considers that humans should live like wild animals with nothing stopping them from living how they wish. So if you, so basically, if you've ever seen, it's basically like hippies for the most part. So basically there's little to no mo model of government believes human beings should be stripped of their responsibilities and only following their own goals, other, unable to be controlled by others. So basically, you can take off your shirt, leave your office job, and just run around in the forest all day if you really want to. If you want to be in an office job, you can run into an office job, get hired immediately, and do your own job. Basically, you have no responsibilities whatsoever. You can live how you want. If you want to live in the wild, you can live in the wild. If you want to live in an office, do an office job for the rest of your life, you can do that and no one can stop you. So basically, you can do whatever you want as long as, you know, you don't control others. So you can basically do whatever you want. You can sit at a desk for the rest of your life or you can run out in the forest for the rest of your life. It all depends on what you want to do. And then finally, evolutionary libertarianism. An evolutionary protective that views society as a blockage to continuation of human evolution, where society has kept humans from evolving into smarter, stronger beings and progressing into a new sapient species. So basically, it believes in human dominance, that humans are the keystone species of the world and must be protected as the sole species that matters. That includes terraforming the earth to fit our species' needs above all others. Humans should be able to evolve past the species to become a new species altogether. So basically, we dominate over the entirety of life on Earth, and if anything tries to stop us, we crush it because we have to be advance into our new form. Evolutionary libertarianism is basically like, it views this, so, so humans come from monkeys who come from apes, so apes evolved into monkeys, monkeys evolved into humans, and humans will evolve into something else, and then eventually evolve into something else, and continues the trend 
evolving to something else, something else, something else, something else. So basically, it believes that human beings right now are a stepping stone species to evolve into something greater, and society and government are holding us back. So basically, it believes that society and government should be erased because we need to evolve into something else. And the only way we can evolve is by dominating over the Earth, transforming the Earth to fit our species' needs above others, and that will allow us to evolve into our, our final form. So yeah, that is evolution or libertarianism, and that is all libertarian ideologies. Pick the one that best fits you, or pick multiple. They do. Some of them intermingle with each other, as always. Like if you like, dislike if you don't, subscribe if you like it, comment down below your thoughts. Um, everyone have a blessed day as always, and of course, as always, toodaloo!